tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Um, I invited another organization and it's pretty cool because they're also called Making a Difference. So actually the, the name is Making a Difference travel PH. We're not in any way connected. Um, it w I was pretty surprised to hear that there's an organization called Making a Difference as well. Um, so anyways, uh, let's not prolong this anymore. I'd like to introduce Raisa Barcelona and Mika Bocchal from Mad Travel PH or Making a Difference PH. Before I forget, they're part of the marketing team of Mad Travel. Hi, Raisa and Hi. Hi. Welcome. <laughs> Hi. How are you? How are you, girls? <laughs> okay, come on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Energetic. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Okay. So before we talk about Mad Travel, uh, maybe the viewers would want to get to know the both of you. Um, so... Tell us something about yourselves. Maybe we could start with Raisa. Um, well, I've been working with um, Make a Difference Travel for, I guess, around two, more than two years now. Um, the, I, was, I guess I was driven to really join Mad Travel with a sense that, well, it has, travel, it has travel involved. But then at the same time, they're able to weave in a way to help the community so that's why I, I was really driven to join it in the first place now let's um talk about mad travel ph so maybe one of you could give like a brief background when did it start and what is the main purpose of mad travel ph yeah. okay sure. uh I'll, I'll be talking about that portion i guess um okay. so mad travel make a difference travel um we're a social tourism platform so Major heavy yung word na yun. So, mm -hmm. just to give you an idea, we're a social enterprise that uses travel as a means to um, provide alternative, meaningful experiences. But at the same time, um, we're able to support marginalized communities in the country. So, okay. it's using, yes. So, it's um, in layman's term, it's mostly like finding the main challenge of a certain marginalized community. And then we, we use our tours to sort of help them um, solve alleviate that current challenge that they're facing, whether it be food security or reforestation. Okay. Um, when How new is Mad Travel PH? So we started in 2015, um, but the communities we work with, um, the one in Zambales, I guess, from 2015, we were, we've been working with them already. But then um, other communities like our community partners in uh, Bataan and Rizal, we only started last year. Yes, last so what year. What is a social tourism platform, Naba? Um, okay, so I guess I should talk first about what a social enterprise is. Because MAD actually started from um, our two co-founders meeting in Gawad Kalinga. If you aren't oh, okay. familiar, Gawad, Gawad Kalinga, they really promote um, ending poverty first. And then they also promote young social enterprises. So social enterprises are businesses that have um, in their core value of their business, it's it's to help a certain community. Um, whether it be, I don't know, a community in Payatas or, um, I don't know, a community in Marikina or here, I guess, or a community in um, Zambales. So it's mainly, that's the main, that's the core, um, I would say that's a core topic. The, that's a core like mission of your business. Um, mm -hmm. So we are a social enterprise in a sense that we help we partner with these communities, these marginalized communities in like um, Zambales, Bataan, and Rizal. Um, but then we we say social tourism platform because we're tec we're technically like a travel agency in that sense. So our main product is tours, but then the core of our um, business is to help these partner communities. So, um, when I travel started, um, the one of the part of the mission vision is to um, help alleviate poverty by including more or both urban and rural communities and social tourism. Um, mm -hmm. So, the destinations are that have been chosen are still quite familiar. 
but um, we try to show a different side to it. For example, Zambales. We know Zambales for its beaches. Um, so, but there's a different side to it. There's uh, the community aspect, and we rarely get to see that. So, with my travel, um, to compare from before to now, um, through the tours, we've been able to um, start a lot of projects. They're part of our tours. They're the center of the tours. Um, so we we are able to um, experience in the community life. Where we can engage with the, uh, the Aita community in the palace. Um, and we started uh, an agroforestry project. So um, when my travel started, it, um, the one of the part of the mission vision is to um, help alleviate poverty by including more or both urban and rural communities in social tourism. Um, mm-hmm. So the destinations are that have been chosen are still quite familiar, but um, we try to show a different side to it. For example, Zambales. We know Zambales for its beaches. Um, so, but there's a different side to it. There's uh, the community aspect, and we rarely get to see that. So, with my travel, um, to compare from before to now, um, through the tours, we've been able to um, start a lot of projects. They're part of our tours. They're the center of the tours. Um, so, we we are able to um, experience in the community life where we can engage with the, uh, the Aita community in the palace. Um, and we started uh, an agroforestry project. When was the last time you went to Zambales? So, but, well, I guess yung co-founders namin, the last time they visited was a month before this whole, you know, COVID happened. Okay, a month before. So that was okay. around, I guess, was it March or something? Yes. I, I think that was our last tour. Okay. Me personally, earlier this year naman. Okay. Okay. So what are we looking at now? Okay, so to give you a better idea, this is actually the landscape um, when you visit their area in Zambal. So, it's, um, I'm showing you two different landscapes. The one on the left side, which is yung denuded land, that is majority of the landscape that you're gonna see. But then with the, with our tours, we were able to reforest a portion around, I think, if I'm not mistaken, five hectares of the land. And we're talking about 3,000 hectares of land now. Um, and that's the reforested area of that we were able to, um, we, along with the community, were able to sort of achieve in that sense. Um, so this is how it looks like in that area. Yeah. Ganda. Just to give you a better idea. Yeah, it's very nice. Actually, a, a nice story that they always tell us is parang when our founder went to this area, he took pictures and selfies and then parang yun upload niya thinking, ah, okay, this is such a nice landscape. Tapos biglang yung friends niya, I think from Mindanao, commented, ah, Raf, actually hindi maganda yung land na yan. if you look closer the mountains are already naked etc so parang that's when we realized now okay there is there's um there's a problem in this land like we have to reforest it okay so this um photo exactly um yeah considered the nabayan as naked yes oh, yeah. okay yeah. so when you oh. uh, when you actually go on tour and then you walk when you walk on the lahar itself so it's we say lahar because it's like a mix of uh, volcanic ash perin, even if year 1991 na yung eruption no um super init ng, ng temperature like even during the morning or what um parang it's very hot because there's really no shade when you walk through that area mm-hmm. the community. Oh, so you really have yeah. to i don't know uh, make sure you you have all that strength. An hour walking, I mean, okay, I'm sure we all walk like at least an hour a day. Well, before the lockdown, no? but I think this one is a different kind of walk. Looking at your photo, yeah. 
Um, yeah, sorry, I wasn't able to include the photo of, we have something called the Grab Carabao, which is basically a Carabao driving a Carreton that you could ride. But then, we call it a Grab Carabao. It's just a Carabao with a Carreton. But um, it's sort of to help. The only reason uh, we make, I mean, we don't force naman people to walk, but then we give them the option to walk that one hour to get to the villages so they know, they understand um, how the ITAs in that community go through in a daily basis, that they ha- they really have to walk that stretch. Yeah, and then Erica, you were saying something about necessities. So um, that's also the reason why we want to do the reforestation. I mean, we're currently doing the reforestation program and I have, uh, I'm trying to share with you an image, one of the recent images of our plant nursery. So what we want to do is um, to help them not just reforest their land, but also grow their agroforest in their area. So in their own backyards, they will they'll have their own basic necessities now. So they can get vegetable fruits just you know a few walks away, because they have all the land. They have all the land. Like they're blessed with three thousand hectares of land that is um, ancestral ancestral land given by the government. So um, might as well make use of it now. That can be their grocery now. <laughs> Right, yeah. The, what you're doing is really good. Huh? I mean, it will help them then. Eh? Because like, I can't imagine no, an hour away just to get um, supplies and then you go back. And then how many times do you do that no, in a week, in a month? Yeah. So at least um, you're helping the community. But this is really interesting. I have Seed Nation and there was also the Making a Difference Market. So maybe... Um, one of you could explain how everything works. Like how how are they interconnected with Mad Travel? Okay, I okay, guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Okay, so Mad Travel, because while we were while we are holding the tours and all, parang we find like we're much bigger than a um a travel company per se. Parang we have we were able to find um opportunities to put up pro- product uh, projects that could like help us in the long term so seed nation I guess I could talk to you first about seed nation it's the ba- it's basically it's basically a seed saving project that we started because we realized there was a weird disconnect um, that the ITAs were the ITA community that we were working with was asking us for seeds um, and the people in when we're in Manila parang it feels like a constant supply of fruits in the groceries, but then the seeds are just seen as, you know, trash. Um, so we found an opportunity to sort of educate people here in the city um, to save their seeds. And then we are able to send those seeds all the way to the Aita community in Zambales so they could plant it in their own um, agroforest. What we should tell people is how we started in Mad Travel. Parang, um, and the first time when we visited the Aita community, kasi our, our co-founder um, initially thought, okay, I guess we to sor- sort of start this partnership up, we have to help them with um, monetary support, right? And me personally, I would think the same thing. Um, but then when he offered this to the, the chieftain during that time, his name is Chief Erese, um, parang he the chief can refuse the money the monetary support then you were surprised Bakit, why would you refuse uh, monetary support then he said he told draft na um because if you give us money like we'll just use it for load um or for alcohol for all these you know fast, it's um, fast run out. Mm-hmm. yeah so Sinabin, so Raf asked him, then what do you guys need? So what he asked, uh, what he told Raf, what they needed are seeds. Because if you give them seeds now, then their children and their children's children children will be able to benefit um, from the produce in the future. So that's that's the reason why. That's mainly one of the stories that have we've kept to our core, and that's why the agroforestry um, program that we do is really supported by seed, our Seed Nation project as well. Um, in terms of like the behavior of people in Manila, it's very nice to know that people would reach out to us via you know Instagram and then let us know that, hey, I save seeds, how do I send to you? Or it's also nice because we would hold, um, we would hold parang 
events in different, you know, different businesses and um, sort of bring our whole seed, seed nation um, pop up kind of um, event and then teach them how to save seeds through making you know, smoothie bowls or you know, cocktails just so it's it's like a better way because you literally save seeds by spitting the fruit right and then just cleaning the seed and then um either you pop a was too big or you just um wash it properly and then leave it out but we found a way to make it a lot more interactive for different businesses and different corporations to sort of learn how to basically save seeds <laughs> Yes. Okay. And it's, um, it's also integrated into our tours. So the events right that we're talking about are um, summer shape down and city with sustainability. So we found a way to make it part of our itineraries, whether it's the weekend tours or the longer um, to, um, itineraries for international travelers and also even during school tours. So yeah, and it uh, yeah. no, helps us collect a lot of seeds that are being planted in the plant nursery in Yang and in Bataan also. Let's say, um, ako personally, like I'm here based in Manila, of course, no tours and right now, and I wanna send seeds. So how do we go about that? You can and call so us and yeah. <laughs> You can arrange for it to be collected or um, you can send it via courier to our office in Quezon City. Okay. And then um, from there, um, naka-hold muna ba? Because of I, because it's COVID now, yeah. diba? And this is the whole pandemic. Then, yes, yes. then you'll have it sent na. Yes. Um, okay. Pre-COVID, uh, we bring the seed during uh, tour days. So that's what the um, the tour participants plant. And the tree planting is our seedling planting part of the itinerary. And now um, that's why the seed saving guide is important also. So we we make sure the seeds are still good even if we store it for a while. You, yeah. Is it can we give any type of seed or is there like a specific? Um, kailangan from a fruit ba or well fruit seeds or vegetable seeds are both allowed um, papaya uh, mango tomato eggplant etc are allowed um, yeah okay. <laughs> so any I guess any kind of seed I, I think yung mga I, like stuff like sometimes we get inquiries can I save an apple seed Parang stuff like that, parang no, you cannot save an apple seed. Stuff like, <laughs> uh, ano lang. Um, I guess, think local fruit na lang. Local, okay, got it. Yeah, lo- local fruit or veggie, yeah. Okay, uh, so this is Mad Market. Yes, okay. um, so ni- this is actually a throwback, but this is when Raf actually got the food pass. But then, nice to show these slides. Um, so this is actually the the community our community partner in Bataan. This is Ate Erlinda and her family. And every year, or every once a year, there's only a certain season when you, they can harvest honey. So these are the harvested forest honey. Tapos we were able to um, rebrand it and then sell it. You know, open it up to the market. Cute, naman. Okay, nice. Yeah. So that's yeah. with Mad Market, we're able to um, continue to work with our Mad Travel partners. So before yes. they were our partner in our tours, now they're our honey supplier, and it's wild organic forest honey. That's okay. Now in the bottles. <laughs> okay. Then, this is in Bataan, right? We're in yes. Bataan. Pala. It's in the El uh, Cavallo area. It's just near the Subic area that most people know. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's in the it's it's a the rainforest area of Subic. Okay, got it. Yeah, I was wondering. Okay, and Bataan. All right, so this is the honey. Galing naman. Okay. Do you have other photos, pa? I think I do have some. Um, here it is. Ah. Mika, you don't want to tell the story here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Interesting, no? Um, like we said, 
there's so many opportunities during this um, weird time. So here you can see our co-founder Raf um, on a Zoom call with Ate Erlinda and Kuya Lito checking on the progress of the food garden or the mini agroforest that we have in Balaan. So that's um, chili, red pe- uh, chili peppers and yeah. Raf showing um, the calabasa that we have in the our mini warehouse <laughs> that we <Okay>. deliver. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah. So um, we see the the potential of my travel also, since we already have this partnership going. Uh, maybe down the line. Right now, they supply us with honey. Once um, the food forest grows and they have surplus harvest they can also sell it on this platform that we have um in yangil in zambales uh, during pre-covid when we had the tour um we already had budding entrepreneurs in the community so they started making um bamboo utensils bamboo straws even jewelry necklaces out of recycled plastic and seeds that they picked up so there's so much potential in, in this platform for our par- partner community. Yeah, for sure, actually. Anywhere than in the Philippines, damning potential to um, do stuff like that, like this. Um, do so, you have another project? I'm, I saw there's another one called the Make a Difference Market Project. Mm-hmm. So we talked about a little bit about the mass market earlier already. So like I mentioned, it was born out of the the pandemic. But now we're trying to reframe it in a way that mad market is not just a response to um, COVID, but we're here to stay. Even now during GCQ here in Metro Manila, um, we say na the the virus is still out there. So for us at Mad Market, we try to still um, address our role in helping um, not anymore flatten the curve, but the prevent the further spread of the virus, um, mm-hmm. while also you know still providing that access to food to people in the city. And long term, more importantly, is to be uh, that I know that platform and community for um, our partners, whether community um, or indigenous people, um, SMEs, and farmers to to have that access, that market for um, livelihood. How can um, we volunteer for? Mad travel, or or uh, maybe you can also tell us because um, you mentioned a while ago that you do tours as well, right? So I mean that's the main ano naman of mad travel. Yes. So how can we volunteer and how can we also um, have our own tours? Okay, so I guess it's a bit tricky right now because mm-hmm. tourism is I know in a complete halt. But um, you can you can um, in a way still join mission since the mission has still continued for us by um, taking part in our crowdfunding. So Raisa mentioned earlier, it's not really a donation. Um, for us, it's still providing jobs and for the supporters or the backers of the crowdfunding, um, you get. Something of value as well in return. So whether it's physical merch or um, vouchers for a future tour, or um, to have access to, we have online course as well um, yes. right now. And order, you can also order on Mad Market. <laughs> yeah, so it's a bunch of different projects where, in one way or another, you can sort of support. Um, I've heard friends who would save seeds on their own homes as well. Um, but I guess I guess that's that's how we're you know how you can in your own way volunteer or help out with Mad Travel. But then in a 
in once the whole virus is gone, like you know, let's like hypothetically, you mm-hmm. can help by joining our tours, or if you're um, if you're if you want your school or your corporation to sort of collaborate with us, what we do because is our tours are more educational in a sense. So we would have um, we would have parang a uh, class. It's like a more outside outdoor kind of classroom. So we would have international schools sort of collaborate with us so we could bring them to Subic and then they could learn directly from our partners there who are the professionals na naman. Um, cause they, if you're interested in that, you can just check out our website in madtravel.ph. Back in Mad Travel, I work mostly with our international guests. So I go up and meet with them and tell them about the Mad Travel story just so they get a better understanding of what they do. Because sometimes, even if they choose to travel with us, they don't have, uh, they don't immediately share that mindset with us. So that's really important. Um, I've also been uh, in some in a couple of school tours and it's been really fun. And, uh, I think that's where I've gotten a fuller experience of what we do. Because um, I experience with the kids. Um, I've been with uh, grade, grade school and even high school kids. Mm-hmm. Um, I experienced the actual hike with them through the forest. Um, I get to plant with them in uh, the plant nursery. Then um, I also, even though I uh, take part in conducting the workshops that we have with them. I also get to learn a lot from them. Um, because they're also um, parang they're also change makers in, uh, in the making. I mean, where they say we are um, the future. <laughs> as cliche as it sounds. It's kind of correct. Naman din. But okay, thank you for sharing, Mika. How about you, Raisa? Um, in a day, I guess on a day-to-day basis, since we're in marketing, we're usually in the back end now. We're not really the ones who hold the tours. But then, I guess my I would like to share more on my experiences in um, when we do go to the tour. So it's nice because it feels like um, our community partners really feel like family, and they also feel like they're our mentors and teachers. So one, I guess. Two, two experiences are the ones that pop in my mind. One, I guess, would be whenever I would go to Zambales and then I would talk to yung former chief in Erese, he would first teach me some, some of their language. Um, so they talk they talk in Zambal, which is their language there. And then he would also teach me about things I um, related to planting. So that's when I found out na not all papaya seeds and not all papaya plants are actually um gonna bear fruit he was telling me and there's two genders now if it's female magkaka bunga or something and then he was like saying na you have to check the root so stuff like that are very parang it's nice to keep learning from them talaga at the end of the day um and then um I want to um um highlight mad market um aside from ordering if you are a um if you have or you know any brands or businesses that are aligned with our values, please let us know. Reach out to us. We'd love to have you on Mad Market. Um, but the reason why I um, got to know Mad Travel was because of um, One Million Lights. One Million Lights, um, they were on my show like, a couple of weeks ago because the one of the co-founders because it's my friend, C. Mark. So, anyways, um, si Sari naman, she was marketing also. She was like, oh, you can um, interview Mad Travel and it's so cool because they're also called Making a Difference. <laughs> I remember them from one of the school tours I joined. They were, um, they distributed solar lights to the community in Rizal. See, small world talaga. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> this, this, I'm so amazed. Okay. Wait, so were you there at the same time? Like how did, uh, or you joined One Million Lights? Um, we were, we were, um, 
conducting the tour for this international school and they partnered mm-hmm. with One Million Lights to um, distribute uh, solar lights to the community that we visited. But see, again, small world. We're all we're also all making a difference by connecting one another. <laughs> but In our own way. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So thank you, girls, so much for um, being on my show. I really enjoyed talking to you today, and um, I hope everything works out for Mad Travel. And I also um, hope to see you girls soon in person. I will. I will get back to you after. Yes. <laughs> after yes. we'll end. <laughs> yeah. Onahin ko muna yung mga ibang <laughs> nagpromise na ako sa mga ibang ano organizations. <laughs> Again, thank you, girls, so much. Um, stay safe and uh, take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Erica. All right. So that ends the show. Again, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Stay tuned for the next episode. Only here on V81 Radio, Manila.